everyone, I am Dr. Lizzie Arnett Chin and I am the veterinarian here at the Naples Zoo. So today we're going to give you a little tour of our commissary, the Vicki and David Smith Animal Commissary. Uh, we're going to walk through and show you a little bit of the commissary and then we're going to take a tour of all of our food. So come with me. So here's where we prepare all of our diets and everything is made and taken care of. But first let's go ahead and go into our grain storage room. Deliveries come in. So we have a nice open garage door. And this is our grain storage room. So we have a nice area that is air conditioned and free of humidity, which is very important for us here in Florida. And we can store all of our grain products and our dry products, our big bag of peanuts for some of our animals all of our primate biscuits, and all of our grain for our hoof stock. Next, I'm going to take you into our freezer so you can see all of our meat products and everything that's frozen here. So as you can see, this is a very large space because we have a lot of product that we have to keep in here. We have a lot of chunk meat as well as ground meat for both our cats and our canines. We have fish for some of our animals, as well as rabbits and rodents. And then we have bones as well for a good enrichment. And a small area of produce that we keep frozen as well. So this is our refrigerator and where we have most of our produce. So we have multiple different types of green leafy uh, vegetables, as well as peppers, and then all of our fruits, pears, apples. We have lots of sweet potato, as well as pineapples and melons. Um, all of our fruits and vegetables. We even have some Brussels sprouts over there for some of them. All right, we're going to go now into our main area of the commissary. So with the large, diverse animal population, we have to have a large diversity of food to give them as well. And that's where everything is prepared here, from our meat diets to our vegetables to our grains. And every area has sort of their separate area. So this is Molly, our part-time commissary keeper, and she is doing produce diets right now. So this is all of our fruits and vegetables. Um, and then on the other side is where we do our grain diets. So we have a few um, pre-made um, biscuits and omnivore, just like you would give to your dogs and cats that we have prepared for them. And then nuts as well. And that's our grain for our zebra. So we have four nice little containers for our zebra. They also get a lot of extra hay, which we don't keep in the commissary. And if you look below, you can see how many different types of grain products that we have. So we are feeding animals all the way from reptiles and birds up to our giraffe and our bongo and our big hoofstock animals and everything in between, even our big gators. Over here we have our meat table. Um, we're not currently making the meat diets, but we will be a little bit later today. And that's where all that is done. So that is kept separate from our produce and our grain. And then we have this beautiful dishwasher. So after all of our animals are fed out, Keepers will come in and rinse their dishes and then we go ahead and put them through there so everything is sanitized and clean and ready to go for the next day. Um, so every single animal, each individual animal has its own page for a diet. Um, so Molly today is gonna take you through our muntjac. So muntjac are a very small deer-like like animal and they mainly eat produce and then they have a little bit of grain as well. And if we go over here, Molly's gonna walk you through the diet. So our mom jack every day gets some leafy greens, so any type of romaine or lettuce or escrow or um, any type of um, greens. So today they got some escrow chopped up into little pieces. Um, they also got um, seven and a half ounces of sweet potato chopped up and diced. Um, and they got four and a half ounces of squash. And they got some strawberries as their fruit today. Hope for tomorrow.
And as you can tell, so these are nice and chopped small, and then some of our animals have bigger chunks that they need. Everything is very individual. Each animal needs their own diet and needs to be prepared in a manner that works for them. So we have some very large tortoises, like our big old dabras. They're gonna have big chunks of carrot and sweet potato. And then we have like our very small little um, uh, cotton top tamarinds that are gonna have to have everything cut into smaller pieces so it's easier for them to chew. And then we have like our goodies who have continuously growing teeth, so we need to get them big chunks so as they chew on it, it also helps take care of their teeth. So each diet is very specific to the animal and the individual. So when we're done with the diet, they all have a specific location we put them so the keepers can find them. We do that for the animals. So these go with all of our other hoof stock animals, so the keepers know exactly which animal it is, by the name written on it, and where to find it every day. And as you can see, Molly is wearing gloves, so we also make sure that um, we are always having gloves on when we're making diets. That way, if we have anything, um, we're making sure that we're not giving it to our animals and everything is kept as clean as possible when we're done. Question, how do you know how much to feed each animal? So their diets are very specific, again, to the individual. So we actually try to do a percentage of their body weight. And then we have to kind of judge from there. So just like you know, a different human might eat one amount and affect them differently than another animal, we then monitor their body condition to make sure that they're getting the right amount. We do have a question from Piper, who's 10. Um, how many types of foods do you have, if you just want to go over them? So many. You want to talk about that? Um, so we usually get a base um, set of produce every, day, um, every week. So apples, pears, carrots, sweet potatoes, a bunch of different lettuces, um, and some fruits. Um, but we also bring in new fruits every week um, for something called enrichment to add to their diet. So enrichment is something that promotes natural behavior and changes up their day. Um, so, like you can see, Gibson, our um, Gibbon, he usually gets a banana um, and pear, but he also got some other types of fruits um, today that are extra fun. Um, where tomorrow he might get berries or something else. They'll change every day. So we try to keep our um, our the type of food um, different every single day. That way we're not giving them the same thing over and over and it gets boring for them. What is your favorite food to make for the animals? Also from Piper. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite would probably be the lemur diets because um, they love all sorts of fun fruits um, and they love to shove it in their mouth and drool everywhere. It's really cute. <laughs> Are any animals allergic to any foods? So we don't have as many allergies, um, but what we do have are um, some foods are toxic to animals that aren't toxic to us or might be toxic to one and not another. So your dogs and cats at home shouldn't be getting anything with onions and garlic, and that's the same for our large cats and our canines as well. Um, and then we make sure that um, they don't get any, uh, so certain animals can have grapes, like our lemurs absolutely love grapes, but that's something that is very toxic to dogs. So any of our coyotes, they, we make sure that they don't get it. So it's more of a toxicity than an allergy. We have a comment that says, love the new enlarged kitchen. How awesome is it to have this now? Oh, it is so amazing. Um, so we came from a very small commissary. Um, we just moved in here in October, and this is about 10 times larger than where we were before. It is absolutely wonderful, and with all of the COVID stuff, we are actually able to keep our distance from each other while we're making our diets to make sure if we've been exposed, we're not exposing other people as well. Um, so this space has actually been very wonderful, and with the current climate has really helped out. Um, Nikki asks, how fast do the animals eat their food? <laughs> uh, depends. Some animals will scarf it down absolutely immediately and be happy, and some like to take their time. It all depends on the animal.
And as you can see, we're weighing out all of our diets. So we do most of our, um, our diets based off of weight. That way we're able to look at it compared to what the animal themselves weigh um, and then split it up so that um, we make sure that they are getting the appropriate nutrients, but also in the quantity that they need to maintain their health. Um, so on the veterinary side of things, diet is incredibly important. If our animals don't have proper nutrition, then they can have a whole host of medical issues. So it is really important that we make sure that they're getting everything that they need in their diets. So as you can see right now, we are um, actually making the Siming diet. Um, so these are our large primates. Um, we have two of them, Booney and Taylor. They get a lot of fruits and vegetables in their diet. Um, Taylor absolutely loves having oranges. Um, Booney, on the other hand, has issues with oranges and will actually um, have some loose stool if he gets it. So we have to also make sure that as we're feeding him out, we're being very careful that one animal, even in the same environment, gets a different diet than another animal. Um, we have a question. Does, do diets change from winter to summer? For some animals, absolutely. Our bears are actually a really good example of that. Um, in the winter time, they, they don't necessarily hibernate here, but they definitely decrease in their appetite. So we decrease the amount of food and the type of food that we give them. And then once spring comes, so we actually have had some diet increases go through just recently. That way we're increasing their amount. So in summertime, when they're starting to eat more and be more active, they're getting more food. It's a really great question. Yeah. Dr. Lizzie, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Oh man, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, if I was an animal, I think I would be a sloth because I could just hang out in the trees, eat my food real slowly, not have to worry about anything. I think it would be a really great vacation. <laughs> so like I was saying, our lemurs actually really love grapes. Um, it's one of their favorite food items. You can see uh, Molly is giving some lemurs some grapes right now. And we also use them for training, not just in their diet. Um, so most of our training, um, we will either give them a separate diet, which is included in their body weight, so we make sure that, again, they're not getting too much from that, um, or they'll take it directly from their um, diet and use it that way. Um, so when we're looking at our overall diets, we don't just look at the ones that we're making for their general diet. We look at everything, and that's dietary enrichment, that's training food, and their normal diet as well. That way we make sure that everyone is staying in the best shape that we can keep them in. Uh, we do have some animals that it doesn't matter how much food we give them, they tend to gain weight. <laughs> um, so then we, we talk to the keepers about increasing exercise and trying to do more stuff to make sure that they're moving more. So we're really on top of making sure that they um, have good nutrition as well as good body condition. Um, it makes my job a lot easier in the long run um, and it keeps the animals much happier as well. Myra asks, how many employees prepare the food daily? Um, we usually have one employee. Um, before we had to change up our schedules with the current climate, we would on Thursdays have two, um, and that was in order to help with deliveries on top of doing our diets. Um, during normal operation, though, we also have a whole host of volunteers that come in and help us, um, which are absolutely amazing, and we miss them a lot right now um, and can't wait till we're back up and running the way we like to be so we can see them all again. Annie asks, do any of the animals eat what is in their habitats? Yes, absolutely. And we try to keep that in, um, in mind as well when we're making their diet. So um, our primates especially are out on beautiful um, natural islands and they have um, fig trees and stuff that they can get fruit on, um, which we do have one of our lemurs has some diabetes. Um, so we have actually moved her to an island that does not have the fruits. Um, that way we can make sure that her blood sugar is in check as well. So absolutely, they will eat foods from their environment. Going off that, we also are planning to do lives with our horticulture team to show you some of the plants that are in their environment and how they interact with those. Another question, what's the easiest food to prepare? <laughs> that depends on who you ask. <laughs> um, I think the meat's the easiest um, because it's not quite as diverse, so it's just a little bit more um, weight-based and you just kind of can go from one to the other. Whereas our produce, I don't know if you agree with that, Molly, is a little bit more diverse and you have to do a little bit more thinking. So it kind of depends on how you're looking at it. Yeah, probably meat would be the easiest. And then grain's pretty easy too, usually. 
Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here in the commissary, and we hope you guys all have a wonderful day.